Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nicolas Gerardi, Deputy Councillor for Education, Science and Culture at the French Embassy in India. And I'm along with Isabelle Virgerias, and I am the Cultural Attaché at the French Embassy. So, bonjour à tous et à toutes. Uh, good evening to all of you. We are very glad to welcome you for this conference on Indian rock art. As you know, this event is organized within the framework of Francophonie event dedicated to French language and speakers. In this regard, the conference will be subtitled in French. We would like also to thank all the network of Alliance Francaise, which has been associated with the event and contributed to its promotion and distribution. We are really pleased to welcome Dr. Dubé for this introduction on Indian rock art. Dr. Dubé is one of the few women working in this field in India. She has devoted her life to the discovery study, publications, exhibition, workshops, and protection of Indian rock art. She discovered dozens of new painted sites, mostly in Madhya Pradesh, but also in other states, such as Rajasthan, Ladakh, and Chhattisgarh. During her career, Dr. Dubé had the opportunity to meet and work with eminent French archaeologist and prehistorian Jean-Claude. Jean-Claude is one of the most important figures in the contemporary prehistorian field in France and in the world. Former chairman of UNESCO's International Committee of Rock Art, he led excavations on early Paleolithic, Upper Paleolithic, and several Neolithic and Bronze Age sites through Southern France. He is weakly known for aiding the research team that appraised Grotte Chauvet, which is an extensive cave in the Ardèche Valley in France. Together, Dr. Dubé and Jean-Claude have conducted many researches on the field in central India, which has led to the publication of three books related to rock art and tribal art in India. Through their work, Dr. Dubé and Jean-Claude demonstrate that rock art is far from dead in India. It is present in thousands of sites all over India, and this art keeps being alive through the ritual practices and traditions from tribal, tribal groups in these regions. The presentation of Dr. Dubé will be followed by some extract from the documentary by Stefan Kovalsic, Si proche et si loin de l'art préhistorique indien, which can be translated so close and so far from Indian prehistorical art. Stefan followed Jean-Claude and Dr. Dubé for several weeks during their field research in Madhya Pradesh, central India. The movie shows their studies and research on cave paintings often spectacular, as well as their encounters with local tribes from the region. Through Stefan's eyes, we can see how the preservation of this heritage is clearly essential. Stefan will be present after to talk about his work as a movie maker and his collaboration with Jean-Claude and Dr. Dubé. You are all welcome to ask questions at the end of the presentation. Dr. Dubé and Stefan will be glad to answer all of them on the subject. We hope through this conference to raise awareness and appreciation with regards to this lesser known art and contribute to its preservation. So now we will let Dr. Dubé start her introduction on Indian rock art. Thank you. Thank you very much. Namaskar. <laughs> so, as you know, Hello, good evening everybody. Today I'm going to talk about Indian rock art. 
in fact indian rock art is the oldest heritage of ours and this indian rock art have been discovered in 1867 by a british officer carlyle he discovered some rock art sites in mirzapur uttar pradesh but unfortunately he didn't know anything about it and he did not publish his work and after the discovery Uh, of altamira in fact indian rock art have been discovered before the dis- discovery of altamira in spain but it got published very late and later on subsequently many people have discovered many sites in india and that thing is still going on still we are finding many sites in our country in for example in 1910 Uh, a railway engineer anderson he discovered some sites in chatisgarh in kabra pahad in singanpur and then gordon he was an army officer he discovered some sites in pachmadi 1934 and 35 then some sites have been discovered in kerala in south india in many places like that So now we will discuss things with the slide show. I will show you few uh, slides from Indian rock art, and particularly from Central India, because Central India is very rich for rock art. So we are going to discuss about it. Here we will discuss about Indian rock art, the kind, what type of art, what was the color, subject, period, faith and belief. and uh, living traditions many things are there so we will discuss about it so now this particular scene you can see this is from bimbatka not far from bhopal now i will show you the sites in india where all we have rock art you can see all these yellow parts all the yellow marks are showing rock art area here from jammu kashmir ladakh himachal pradesh uttaranchal rajasthan uttar pradesh madhya pradesh of course almost full then bihar jharkhand chatisgarh orissa everywhere telangana andhra pradesh tamil nadu karnataka keral even here, here in goa also we have some engravings in manipur we have engravings so see we are so rich for rock art for our, the oldest heritage here we have two types of art one is engravings that is known as petroglyphs and another one is painting that is known as pictograph so these are the paintings so they it looks like this is the rock art you can see this bare rock shelter and on this on the surface of rock shelter early people made these drawings and to make these drawings they did not prepare any wall or anything like fresco or mural no they just painted like that only and they have used mainly red and white color next uh, technique is in rock art is engravings here you see this is from ladakh in ladakh area we have many boulders and all these boulders are parallel to the indus river janskar and all are along the silk route you can see many engraved boulders are there and all these engravings probably early people they have used sharp tools stone tools to engrave these art and in uh, ladakh culture the ibex is a very important animal is ibex in their rituals and ceremonies another thing is yeah this this one is uh, you can see the indus river next to the indus river is the big boulder and engraved with chorthan or stoop because in ladakh you will see lot of buddhism and from 2000 years back uh, you will see many buddhist culture is there before that we have seen many hunting scenes and dancing scene and other other subjects are there now for painting for painting i mean it's always people are curious in 10000 years back because these paintings belongs to 10000 years ago old from 10000 to historic time So ten thousand means early Mesolithic, Upper Paleolithic. We have some art in Central India, in Madhya Pradesh, and near Bhimba, in Bhimbatka, that goes to Upper Paleolithic, as per my guru, Dr. Vakankar. And then from that time to then we have Mesolithic art, the Neolithic, Calcolithic, Iron Age, early historic, historic, medieval, and recent. 
so these uh, we you can see in rock are different phases different time and the development of human kind so here we'll discuss about color what they did how they have obtained color to paint uh, the rocks so these pigments are natural pigments they have found from the ground only and this is red hematite this is very common because many red paintings are there and locally this hematite known as geru and this is kaolin white clay and this one is yellow ochre yellow clay a uh, black is manganese very rarely we have seen some black paintings are also in the rock art and probably they made it with the manganese with manganese and here for green color is terravert green color is very very rare in indian rock art and only in uh, uh, raisen district we have noticed some green color and for making brushes they must have made these bamboo sticks you can see the thin bamboo sticks you can uh, crush it very easily front part and you can make it as a brush and for some time for making some fine work one can use these quills uh, to make fine work to make to mixing color instead of mixing palette you can make bowls out of uh, leaves and to keep water also and this tradition is still i have noticed in the village tribals are doing it they are using these clays and these kind of brushes and they are making uh, decorating their walls during the festival this ex this particular experiment done by my guru dr vakankar and this was done by me now we are in bimbatka Bimbatika is the only heritage site, rock art site in India, which comes under UNESCO World Heritage. It was discovered by my guru Padm Shri Dr. Vakankar in 1957, and this site has been inscribed under World Heritage Site in 2003. So Bimbatika is well known for its natural beauty, his landscape, and hundreds of shelters are there we have very different clusters of painted shelters here and you can see here a lot of tourists are there it's a very popular site and here in this is the shelter and here you can see rock paintings and this area was excavated here also here in inside there are rock art and now next yeah in the early mesolithic time people used to make huge size animals the main subject was only animals and big size animals well decorated animals because perhaps they were treated as a defied animals they have been uh, worshiped uh, by those people perhaps because they have spent lot of time to paint them to make them very artistically they have designed it and here this particular wild boar is known as mythical boar why mythical boar because he's got two horns normally boars don't have horns so while doing my projects on madhy pradesh i have collected many uh, local testimonies from the natives and i came to know still still this boar is very important among gonds and korkus and bagas they they use it for their ceremonies and rituals and they have many stories related with these animals so perhaps the depiction of this animal is related with one of their story here you can see a close up of that thing and he is this animal is is chasing one man and he is running there are some more designs but now they have not very clear another thing is another scene was dancing in mesolithic time we have seen plenty of dancing scenes and they are in green color and twisted as shape they are very full of rhythm very nicely done in just i sometimes it looks they have used just one single stroke to make these dancing figures and these are there's a rare color is green pigment is very rare this one is from bimbatka another one yeah after that perhaps man, they have started hunting animals they have uh, they have uh, evolved good uh, spears they made uh, uh, other weapons and they have started chasing and hunting animals here you can see these big bison they are running for their life and these 
hunters are chasing them they have one of them is already thrown this spear and here you can see these women hunters are also participating in this hunting game and two wild boars are there you can see this wild boar is so beautifully done is inside the nice pattern and as per dr wakankar the mesolithic time was the golden era for rock art because mm. it's particular mesolithic time we have seen the paintings are full of aesthetic sense they are done very proper proportionate everything is there rhythm is there actions are there and drawing is perfect next is this big bird is it looks like an ostrich and with two chicks because and this is uh, this is from katotia not far from bhopal and it comes under ratapani wildlife sanctuary it's a beautiful uh, uh, bird nicely depicted and you can see his body its body is well decorated they have taken so much of time to design it that shows they have some purpose some meaning some faith for painting it because it's not like just they did it even for these small chicks they have painted their body here also and surprisingly and interestingly dr wakankar and his students they have found lot of ostrich egg shells pieces of egg shells and they have been carved and in uh, bhimbatika one of his, his excavation in one burial in the upper paleolithic layer he found one human skeleton is put uh, putting uh, have got that necklace made with ostrich beads so ostrich um, egg shells have been found in central part of madhya pradesh now you can see this one tiger facing uh, stag and they are and in between there is a one small tree and you can see behind there are many traces of art so this is another interesting part to understand indian rock art why people have used same place to paint again and again because they have already used this rock they have already painted here but again some other people came and they used it with white color so that shows particular perhaps this particular part of that uh, shelter was sacred because i have noticed there are in pachmadi or other places a huge side shelter 4 5 meter long big shelter with very good projection but you will see just one corner is painted and whole shelter is empty i mean blank they have not they didn't use whole shelter they use one corner and again over a period of time you see mesolithic time then you see calcolithic then you see historic also you see big animal on top of that they made the hunting scene dancing scene even then fighting scene so this is a very strange thing why why these people use only that one particular place that shows but that area was sacred for them and they had some uh, why they must have felt some wives there they uh, they wanted to uh, uh, pay their respect to something made by their ancestors and they were following that tradition they were organizing ceremonies ritual whatever they are so it is some something like that same another example from kharbai area you see here also a beautiful stag design with decorated body and this particular animal is also painted on many layers before is behind this you can see many layers many thing in red yellow white and top of it you see one red archer standing holding big bow and many arrows so this is another thing i mean using one particular place for painting many by many people of different era now another one this one you can see this uh, hunter archer hunting uh, monkey and you see his bow and arrows and his arrows got big tip it could be iron or stone because they have used to keep uh, to use arrow heads to uh, for do hunting it's a very good uh, scene from pachmadi bori area 
another one this is also from pachmadi you see here fish hunting and for fish hunting again they are using bow and arrows and this man is holding some bag to carry to keep fish in it but this man is holding big bow and they are going to hunt fish another one honey honey collection honey collection is also very popular in india because see we still uh, tribals are collecting honey from jungle and i have noticed in pachmadi area and other places also in chatisgarh also in madhya pradesh we have plenty of honeycombs and is even sometimes honeycombs on the rock shelter when we go to work there we are working and we see on top many honeycombs are there with many bees so uh, many people have already suffered because of these bees but touch wood we have done lot of work but nothing has happened so you see another thing this man is trying to drive off these honey these dots are honey bees for her and honey to collect honey and many honey combs are there so it's a very live scene still we can see in the jungle at the rock shelter a uh, painting and real one both one can see and on top of it here you can see some snakes one two three snakes have been drawn and before it some more figures are there one big animal is there another animal is there here they they did something on top of it so it's just like that now after that time we can see this uh, in neolithic time we have seen in neolithic time people have started understanding that they can control animals they can do cultivation they can make bullock cart they have started making chariots and here these two horses this chariot is driven by these two horses and these men are uh, riding it and we have seen lot of hump bull in that time and you can see the subject of painting is changing now from big animals hunting dance dancing was everywhere every time but the style is every time different so here you see these uh, chariots bullock carts things are there after that in early historic from 100 uh, 300 bc to 100 ad we have noticed lot of buddhist impact in rock art because perhaps that was the time that buddhism had started and many monks they used to they have started staying in those rock shelters and they have started painting stupas and buddhist patterns and brahmi inscription and things and for that they are in uh, near budni there is a very famous uh, shelter which have been used by buddhist monks even this one is very rare from saddara the saddara is not far from San you see here a nice stupa and there is a inscription and this is a portrait of buddha which is very it's a very very unique and rare scene in rock art now another thing yeah this we come in historic time early historic we have noticed this is from pachmadi head hunters a very uh, a uh, rare depiction in india i have seen kind of head hunters only in pachmadi area in five six rock shelters are having similar kind of head hunters other than these head hunters we have noticed in south america and peru also so here you see this man is holding beheaded head so as we know in nagaland this head hunting was very popular nagas used to be a very good head hunter and while can uh, conflict among two groups one the winner used to be head the enemy's head and they used to use it as a trophy so perhaps similar uh, thing happened in pachmadi area also that's why we have found many head hunting scenes there even human sacrifice we have we came to know about human sacrifice stories also in chatisgarh also so these kind of things were uh, is are happened in early time now in medieval time from 800 800 ad to 1300 between you see many uh, things happen like these elephant riders and horse riders and people are going there is a conflict war scene it, these kind of paintings are we have plenty of and these paintings are superimposed by uh, uh, these paintings are superimposing early art and another uh, war procession 
from Bimbatka. Look, all these uh, horse riders and cavalry, they are going for war perhaps because everybody is holding weapons, sword and things. And they are passing through the forest and that's why perhaps this tiger is attacking and some more animals are there, bird is there, peacock. So that's a nice uh, depiction from Bimbatka. This comes in, this particular scene comes in recent art. After medieval time, what we have seen, a lot of contemporary art, you know, very much similar to folk art, tribal art, and that thing you can see on the rock art also. So this is a good example of uh, the recent rock art. So now I will show you very few art from Rajasthan because Rajasthan is neighboring. This is just a neighbor border area of Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan, Bundi district. Bundi district has got beautiful art from Mesolithic to recent. This is a Mesolithic scene, a big sign with a lot of designs. And next to it, you see a very recent sign from the cave from shelter only. People have used it. It's a swastika in a different way. And then you see from Rajasthan Golpur shelter, there are humped bulls, which shows uh, the Neolithic period. And then in Bhimla, this is also from Rajasthan. Here you see a big tiger is standing. And these women, these men and women are standing in front of him, in front of it. And they are not running. They are trying to stop him. And behind you see two hunter. He's uh, try. They are. He's hunting him. So you know, while working on this central area, I have done many projects in this area, and I came to know through local ethnic groups that they have many stories about controlling tiger. They said, perhaps before two generation, their ancestors were able to control tigers with their chants. So who knows, perhaps this particular scene is related with one of that story. Now we are in Chhattisgarh is again, again neighboring state of Madhya Pradesh. It used to be a part of Madhya Pradesh, but now it's a separate state. Here you see nice hunt, uh, dancing scene. They are in so rhythm, dancing in rhythm. And here you can see many other layers also. This is also from Chhattisgarh and you see this uh, uh, particular panel is used many times by people. Here you see big wild boar. Here you see one uh, dancing long row in yellow, red and some monkeys are running. And on top of it, you see many hands. The speciality of Chhattisgarh rock art, what, what I have noticed during my project working in Chhattisgarh, now almost uh, we have seen more than 63 sites there and nearly every site has got handprints because this handprints is a living tradition in Chhattisgarh. It's still still tribals are using they go to that site to make handprints during uh, Janmashtami and I have noticed other than red hands there are white and yellow handprints so white handprint they make out of rice paste and yellow with turmeric and it's very auspicious for them and they are uh, uh, worshipping these sites like their own gods. Yeah, and another good thing in Chhattisgarh, these are the hand stencils. We have found few hand stencils in Mirzapur, some are in Madhya Pradesh, but maximum hand stencils have been found in Chhattisgarh area. And hand stencils goes quite early period. Here you see this is the real uh, shelter. You can see many hands are here, many hand stencils. There is no print, only stencils or negative hands. And this is a close-up. I use a special software known as D-Stretch. With that software, you can enhance rock very art very easily and you can see it but after uh, while using that software the color has changed it's real color is this but uh, after the software but you can understand it's good to understand art so how do they have make uh, hand stencils they must have put their uh, hand on the raw and they use color in their mouth or through tube they must have blown it and they made hands. These kind of hands are 
everywhere. Argentina in South America is known for these hands in Indonesia, in uh, Thailand, and then in Australia, in uh, Europe, America, everywhere you find these hand, negative hands. Another is another important site in Chhattisgarh is Usha Koti, and it is a huge, very big site, very big shelter. And what we have seen here, only, only signs, only ge ge geometric figures, and nothing. You see, all types of figure, this shape and signs are there: uh, square, rectangular, vertical, circle, triangle, all types. And local people, they believe even crescent moon is here. People believe that they are the soul of their ancestors, they reside in these signs. So maybe that's why they come and very often they come to this site and they sacrifice, uh, they often they celebrate, they do some ceremonies, their shaman come, they sacrifice goat, and they have big ritual there. So these sites are precious and sacred for them. Now so we have seen all these art is so important and sacred for our native people. Are we doing right to vandalizing them? No. You see the example in Pachmari. People have vandalized it so badly. It's a beautiful uh, stag. And see, they put color, they put their name. I mean, people are taking so much of paints. They are bringing paint with them to, the, to spoil the art. Another one, another is from Pachmadi Churna. Here you see the big scene and this whole lower part is vandalized. And the, this close up of that art, you can see it is a beautiful medieval time art. There's a war scene. So I have a request to everybody, please come forward to protect site, not to vandalize it. See this Baga from Chhattisgarh, he's worshipping Sai. See here, there are so many rock art and uh, he's uh, offering coconut and doing and reciting some chants because they, be, they have a lot of faith and believe in these sites. Now, I will show you the rock art site is still not yet dead in our country. The traditions are not over, but they are transformed. I mean, what things we have seen in the jungle rock, you know, at rock art shelter, similar thing we can see now at the tribal's houses. This particular scene is from Saura tribes, uh, Sauras from Urisa. During their, they, they, they never make designs to decorate their uh, house. No, these designs are related with their ceremonies and rituals. To, for, to perform their ceremony, their puja, they make kind of signs. And you can see all kinds of subjects, animals, birds, tree, everything is there. And their shaman comes to perform ceremony. Another example is from Jhabwa, these Bhil tribes. They make Pithera. Pithera Baba is their god. This is also, it's not for the decoration because I went, I, I interviewed them. I had a lot of testimonies from them and I came to know if something will happen in their family, suppose they don't have kid or somebody is sick or they don't have good crop. So they uh, do manta. They pray God, they pray their local God. If everything will be okay, whatever they want, if they'll get it, so they are going to organize a pithera, they will paint, they make it. Fine, after fulfilling their wish, they are bound to organize that ceremony. And these ceremonies are, believe me, very expensive for those poor people, but still they do it. They were ready to spend lakhs and lakhs monies for this ceremonies you know so you see all animals and things are there now another thing is see this kohobar kohobar is very popular in bagel area and during wedding they make kind of signs and these similar signs we as we have seen in rock art also uh, this is uh, related with funerary art. It's a memorial board by the tribe Maria Muria Gons from Bastar area. After when somebody's died in their family, they are, it is compulsory for them to make a kind of uh, mud. This is known as mud in their uh, term, in their language. 
and they make out of big slab and you see the drawings are very much similar to rock art all kind of animals are there and on top of this big uh, rock slab they make a uh, bird out of wood and flying bird which which, which represents soul so so we can see what is there rock art is not a part of the decoration rock art is always related with their faith belief and traditions and this tradition is still going on in india in africa and australia so there are very few places where like rock art is still alive and transformed as a ethnic tradition and we should come forward and save rock art thank you so much for listening me stress you right l r e see there's a big animal yeah. this in one color and top of it this and try it with something else okay it lab no why are the oh it's got lab but oh. with lab see lab is better yeah yes lab is better you see humble and another painting on top of it mm. and this is dark this is brownish we can see mm. it like black mm. and something no, is better. here this is better that is something which you find in lasco you find it everywhere yeah to give uh, importance yeah Yes, 100% look at this. Yes, that's right. Now the tail, have... tail is going like this. Yeah, and this is also a tiger, another fig, another yes. layer, another time. Yes, yes. Different style. But you can see many styles. This has got a big open big. mouth. Yeah. Big teeth. Big, very big one. And you see... The yeah, another a... one is here. This, this one, one is also tiger. It's a good photo because oh. you see the different no, layers. No, no, no. See another tiger here. The old, yeah. old layer, early layer. Wow, look at this. Mm -hmm. Without these threads, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I agree. Wow. Good. See this? Yeah, yeah. 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 to make a small dots rings to make a small rings to make a star rajini color hai rajini she is not happy But now she is going to bless me <laughs> <laughs> so it's very good no very natural no brush nothing no that's very good. primitive very primitive it's no, quite no? good no no it's quite yeah. good well people are ingenious these are the uh, feet of goddess lakshmi Yes. This design, the drawing is particularly for Diwali. If you can see these lamps, uh, other than the symbolic uh, lamps, and these are the, uh, Goddess Lakshmi's feet, because Goddess Lakshmi is a uh, symbol of wealth and prosperous. This is also a symbolic pattern, you know, with designs, and it's a long tradition. The tradition is still going on. Kind of thing we can see in the rock paintings also. This kind, this kind of pattern we have seen in rock art also. Yeah. Very much. No? So this tradition is still going on. Hey. So, uh, are we close or uh, far from rock art here? Oh, we're uh, close. We close. Close yes. to some rock art. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. No, no, really, uh, because the way of yeah. making the paintings uh, is really prehistoric in a way. You see, because they use just uh, uh, natural materials, and uh, that is what prehistoric people used to do when they made rock art. No, no, here we're quite, in fact, we're quite close. Quite close. 
to, with the techniques, you see, and probably with the spirit, which is the spirit of the festival. They render homage to their cows, and people had a relationship with the animals, whether the, the wild animals or uh, the domesticated animals. And painting was part of it, and here we see it, and it's vivid. Oh, look at that. Well, that is a nice cow. And this girl, she's decorated it. She and her mother. Uh, she and her, her mother. mother. They Woman. did it. Woman. Woman, yes. Father put only hand press. Easy job. <laughs> No, we have not come here. Calcolithic period is superimposed by the historic period. See all these white hump bulls. Hump, yes. Yeah? And this period superimposed by, by the this red, ones. red ones. Historic, late historic, historic time. Yeah, this one is good. The man is jumping to kill. He's just jumping to fight or to kill somebody. He's yeah. holding sword. And see it's his posture. For dating, we are following a stylistic pattern. You know? And like hump bowls we have seen more in Neolithic period. Then horses started coming in historic period. So we can divide them in different periods. And paintings are superimposed. So superimposition is very easy to date. Uh, we can classify them in different periods, different time, according to their styles and colors. Well, this is a beautiful site. These really ones are calculated and historic, but here it's visualistic time. With this I can say. Oh, bear, bear, black bear. Yes, black bear. Black bear. Beautiful animals. And it is safe because it's uh, up to there, white ones. Yes, there are the white ones wow. over there. It's I don't know, sprinkle seed to sign. There also, Jo, see, on top. Yes, this and is... some the, uh, of them were... Mesolithic, would you say up there? No. No, uh, no I'm no. not sure. This is uh, calculating. Row of fish you can see here. What fish. And these are the archers. Archers and bear, tiger. You can see the forest, <laughs> Indian forest here. Indian wildlife. Humble. You can see their headdress and costume. With the help, we can I can identify this particular painting is belongs to Kushan period. I was quite sure for this site. We are going to get beautiful ones. And the interesting thing, this site is having all periods. I can see Mesolithic period and some superimposed Calcolithic period is here. Historic, late historic, awesome. It's a great site. I'm so glad. And you can see all this. Even I can see a big tiger here. Well decorated tiger. John, that is a tiger. <laughs> And I'm telling them to protect these paintings. Oh, yeah. This is a young generation. They should know about it and they are supposed to protect. No? Ta, il se photographie, il s'étudie, il se laisse, et on le laisse là où il est. Et on le touche pas, même pas avec le, avec le doigt. Quoi. On fait des photos. Voilà, c'est tout. Parce que ça ça, ça, ça lui fait pas mal. Et au contraire, ça le préserve. Euh, faire des photos et tout, on le garde pour les générations futures. En tout cas, c'est si, oui, un site majeur, c'est vrai. C'est un site superbe. Très bien, bien conservé dans un sable, bien que tout le bas soit effacé par les animaux. Les, les animaux viennent, les vaches viennent ici. Quand il pleut, tout ça, bon, elles se mettent à l'ombre. Elles ouais, se mettent à l'abri et elles se frottent contre la paroi. Et tout le bas, était, et on, on voit à peine les traces. Uh, yes. The red one is nice. I think the red one is a tiger. Uh, the red one? Is a tiger, I think, or elephant. Just, you cannot see it properly. Yes. One, second, two stuff up to there. Yeah.
Okay. Where do I keep it? Just to see, where is the nose? The nose is up there. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. uh, thank you, everybody, to, to have a look to a part of uh, this movie. Uh, I'm, uh, so I'm Stefan um, Kowalczyk, the director of the movie. I'm going to explain you in a, in a few, uh, just on, only for a few minutes, uh, the process of the movie. So I live in South of France in a small town uh, called Narbonne. It's close to the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea and uh, near Spain, near the Pyrenees. Um, in Narbonne, I, I'm friend, I am a, a friend with a, a guy called uh, Marc Azema. Marc Azema is a prehistoric uh, scientific as um, Minakshi. And he works with uh, Jean-Claude, uh, the man we saw in the movie. Uh, Marc Azema um, work on the, he had the idea that some people, some people, prehistoric people in the paintings, that they wanted to represent the movement in the, in the, in the paintings and in the drawings. So Marc uh, connect me to Jean-Claude uh, 10 years ago. And uh, the first uh, work that uh, we make together, uh, I mean, uh, making a movie, we, uh, was uh, in, uh, in Spain, in uh, a famous place for uh, um, uh, rock painting, which is called El Castillo. So we, we've been there uh, 10 years ago and we made, we made a movie. And uh, um, so Jean... Um, um, tried uh, um, uh, begin to, to, to work with Minakshi. And uh, he said to Mark Azema, uh, uh, you know, Mark, uh, the work uh, I am uh, making with Minakshi in India is very uh, interesting. Uh, we, w we made uh, books and so on. And he said to Mark, would you like to, to come with me and make a movie about this, uh, this work? And so Mark was so busy <laughs> and he said, he said to me, okay, Stefan, would you like to go to India? I said, oh, yes, <laughs> uh, to work with Jean and Minakshi and to, to, to make a small movie about the, their, their work. So I said, okay. And it was in uh, 2014, we make the recording of, of the, the, the movie. So I, I went in... A, I went in India and I, uh, I, I, I met for the first time uh, Minakshi and we, she had prepared a, a, a traveling to show me and, and us uh, uh, all the different things that we, we can see in the movie. So uh, I uh, took the pictures and then uh, I... Uh, I, I, I wait for uh, two or yeah two two or three years uh, to begin the editing of the movie because uh, it was done on my free time you know and uh, so it takes a long time to to edit the movie but uh, I did it and uh, we we present this movie uh, we, uh, who uh, which at least is about a, is a one hour um, uh, uh, longer. And uh, uh, we present the movie in a festival in uh, Switzerland, a festival of archaeological uh, movies, and we get award. Uh, and uh, in, uh, in Switzerland with Minakshi, because she, she came uh, to present the movie, we, we begin a, a new, to, to work on a new idea to, uh, to, um, to work together on uh, Neolithic, uh, the question of the Neolithic cows. Because uh, in, uh, in Switzerland, uh, after this uh, festival, we, we, have, um, we, we, we went in, a, in, in, the, 
in the landscape to see a, 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 a kind of a tradition of Swiss, uh, Switzerland people uh, who practice uh, um, fighting uh, with cows. They, 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 they make the cows uh, fighting together. So we have a look of this and we, we begin to, to have a new idea to work on, uh, on Neolithic cows in a, in a general uh, way. Okay, Nona, so I hope that's my, I'm sorry for my English. My English is not so, uh, so fluent, but if you have some questions, maybe now we can uh, answer to your questions. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Okay, so in fact, there is, uh, I can see the question. There, there, there are many questions. So, uh, excuse me, I, I, just a moment, I, I, I choose a, a question. Melakshi, can you see also the questions? You too? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm busy in replying. It's different. <laughs> there are so many questions. It's difficult. Okay. I'm typing quickly. Sometimes I miss some and I'm trying to answer everybody but i don't think it's uh, easy to you know okay, to do it so is, quickly okay so, someone is asking uh, uh what are the materials using today for rock art and can they survive for longer periods can you answer the question this question pardon, pardon. i'll uh, just someone, read it uh, someone is asking um uh, what are the materials used today for rock and uh, for rock art, and can they uh, survive for longer periods of time? Material. I've already talked about the material that okay. natural colors they have used. I have already talked about it in the beginning, and yes. that those natural colors and the rock is most of the time is sandstone. So sandstone observe color, you know. So uh, the color seeped into it. But it's uh, it because of good uh, na natural conditions, good forest, thick forest, those art is survived. But now, in present time or last 50 years, due to deforestation, paintings are damaging, fading very fast, very fast. So we have to we have to save environment. We have to educate our people. The more publicity is more dangerous. Because I know, I have seen when anything is, uh, when people come to know anything, they would, they would prefer to go and visit. And some people, they put cup water on top of the art to see it. So that way paintings is damaging, is spoiling. So now it's not like that. Uh, and our art is really fading. Most of the time in my presentation, you were able to see paintings very clear because I have used a special software that is known as D stretch and because of that i was able to enhance the art but actually it's not like that sometimes it's difficult to see difficult to understand then what i do i take all the photos and when i come at home i worked on them and it takes a lot of time to work on using photoshop then using your D stretch to identify art okay yeah so uh, another question, uh, uh, someone wants to know why colors uh, is not spoiled after so many years. That's what I said. It's the same answer for oh, okay. both the questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, somebody has asked, ma'am, is the tradition of rock art is still continuous? Yes in some places and you know this local people they never they don't like to disclose their culture because maybe they are afraid of us because we don't respect them that is the main reason but i am working from so many years nearly three decades so in some places like in pachmari 
I made a good uh, rapport with them because I really I respect them and they are such a wonderful people, and they worship rock art. They go those rock art sites are uh, sacred for them. They do ceremonies there. Sometimes they put color. They make some drawing, some symbolic, some auspicious patterns that you can see. Some uh, recent art is there. so that is a kind of continuity is there and we are lucky the kind of culture we have in uh, asia in our country nation countries in africa and australia that's it and then you see uh, this tradition gradually is transforming from uh from rock art to their houses when they organize ceremonies when they do rituals they draw paintings on their house on the wall of their house so that is also not for the decoration that is also a kind of tradition kind of worship okay yeah. can you can you tell more about uh, the questions of negative and yeah i as i said negative hand is not like uh, dipping uh, dripping uh, hand in the color and making paint no that is known as positive because you you use uh, you put color on your hand and you make it uh, print on the wall in this case you put your hand on the rock and then you maybe they have put color in their mouth and they spread or maybe through the pipe blow you know like that that's why we said it's negative it's like a stencil hand stencils also we can say okay you yes. have, uh, you have already answered but me, but uh, you, you can tell us another time uh, someone is asking how, how we date the rock art yeah see in india it's a really a big problem dating art because uh, like in europe other european countries they have cave art made with charcoal so carbon is easy to date for carbon they do carbon dating and things so for european caves they have plenty of dates and very authentic dates but in our country we till now we didn't find anything made with charcoal we have mainly pigments and dating pigment dates is impossible we cannot date pigments is yes, but there some dates have been done like uh, for example in bhimbatka ams dating otherwise dr wakankar and uh, dr mishra they have excavated many shelters and they have found burials from upper paleolithic time in upper paleolithic burial they have found green noodles so th on that basis dr wakankar said perhaps that those green paintings green dancers or sometime i have found green animals also green color paintings goes to upper paleolithic time sometimes in uh, adamgarh they uh, in the burial they found red hematite some red hematite noodles used one so according that way these uh, some of the art have been dated but uh, nowadays there is a very popular uh, method uranium thorium many people are following it but still with uranium thorium also we are not getting exact date because it's too far because it, uranium thorium is helping to date something some deposit on top of the pigments to top of the art so directly we are not dating pigments so we are we can't say exact date for this but we can what all we have studied our seniors and what all research have been done on according to lee accordingly we are uh, talking about their period and time thank you yes stephen okay another question uh, is uh, what's the frequency of di discovering uh, these arts are they common in india only or rest of uh, uh, asian continent Oh yes, it's all around the world. Painting, uh, rock art are discovering day by day. The more uh, we are, more uh, what to say, exposing forest, and we are getting more rock art sites because most of the rock art sites are in the deep, dense forest. So yes, we have in every country people are finding sites. It's a common phenomenon everywhere. Yeah. um there's so many questions <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that is an interesting question. I see. Uh, many says rock art is the demonic manifestation of ghosts, devils, or which is part of various ritual, whatever you like to tell. Yeah, you know, there are stories are like that, and magical practices were very common in early time also like we can see still uh, in the remote area still people are following those magical practices so maybe some part still i came to know uh, people are using those sites for their magical practices so in a way it's not 100% but maybe in some cases they have used those sites for magical practices also yeah. Okay. Someone is asking. It's a question for me. Someone is asking. I think where, where you can see the documentary. The documentary is on YouTube. Yeah. So you can you can see it uh, on YouTube. Okay. And okay. Uh, uh, someone is say asking also why uh, gray color is rare in uh, yeah in their painting. Yeah. They say, why we. Yeah, we really don't know why green color is rare because we didn't find many art made by green color, made with green color. We have seen very uh, few uh, green color paintings in Raisin district, mainly uh, in different uh, sites like in Kharbai, in Jaura, in Bimbatka, Katothia, and uh, in Urden also we saw some green. And surprisingly, I, I saw, I discovered one site in Umaria near uh, Amarkanta, there we found one green color paintings, but not many. And why, we really don't know. Maybe that color was not easily available, so the people have not used it. Someone is asking why they, they repeat rock art on the same area. Yeah, that's what I said. Why? Because perhaps mm -hmm they found that place is auspicious or maybe that place used by their ancestors. So we should do that. Like the similar thing somebody asked me, we are, we go to uh, temples or church or a mosque and we touch the wall and we, uh, we get some power or we put hands or we make symbols or we, we put dots to the God and everybody is using his forehead or his feet. So it's something like that because human brain is same. Those people who we are homo sapiens, they were homo sapiens. So the thinking is very much same. Okay, yeah. someone is, is, is asking you, uh, can you tell, can you tell the, uh, the name of the yeah, software, yeah. you know, and uh, so, distress and so on. And can, can you speak about, uh, you know, computer and distress for, for this, uh, for your work? It's, uh, uh, about distress software, important. okay. Yeah, DS or distress software is really important because with this you can understand rock art better. As I told you, nowadays rock art paintings are not in a good condition. I am doing my best. I'm trying to convince, I'm writing, I'm putting things in my paper and things that government should protect rock art sites because this is it's a kind of Thing, we cannot make it again. Monuments can be repaired, but rock art site, no. Once it's finished, it's finished. And many sites have been damaged fully, totally finished. Even in Bhopal, I'm giving you example, in Manwa Bhanki Tekri, when we went there, hardly anything is there. It's totally damaged. I found one <coughs> big, nice shelter. And when we de-stressed it, I saw, oh my God, 10,000 years old, big, beautiful animals were there, but in a very bad condition. Half of them are missing. So it's like that. So with de-stress, we can study it. This software is invented by our American colleague, Mr. John Harmon. And this is available on internet. People can buy it and use it. You can put it on your phone also. But this is particularly, it is to understand to study rock art. With that, you can uh, uh, do better research, you can understand, and without touching it, because it is very important to understand, we know when we don't have any right, according to UNESCO guidelines, we are not supposed to touch that rock art, because touching is, again, we are damaging art. 
and i have seen many researcher many people is still they are touching it they are putting water on it because there is something in their mind when you put water you can see picture clearly but after that the picture get faded so please don't do anything i am requesting everybody use these tricks try to understand take the um, uh, image without touching the art don't damage the ground don't do anything so that way and you have to understand this study this software it's easy to work here somebody asked me an interesting question uh, interesting question uh, have you faced any situation where you visited a site and you were threatened by tribal they posed any problem no not at all i am in that way i'm very lucky i am working from for th last 30 years people have always supported me always nobody have create any problem never even those local people local tribes they were so good so faithful and they really helped me even i said i'm really thankful to them without their help i think i am nothing i won't be able to discover so many sites to work on those sites because when i have started doing my phd in 87 i was just 22 that time pachmari was really thick forest hardly anything was there it was all open no vehicle just one taxi used to be there so when i have started working i used to go with one korku couple and they were so so loyal people they were always with me and they held me like anything i really am thankful to them and i respect them i respect their culture their emotions feelings so there is no point of creating and even in bastar bastar is such a dangerous area when i was working on chatisgarh rock art and we went to up to dantewada interior villages i worked there but all those people really helpful even those shamans in bastar area those people i i always found good people and good help so that's a good thing if you want to do good work people will help you always <laughs> thank, thank you so much dr dubey thank you so much uh, stefan kwarsik thank you very thank much you, Nicholas. It, thank you nicholas thank you almost one one hour it's more than one hour that we discussed but if you don't mind dr dubey maybe one very last question that uh, we 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 have received so we let just yeah let sure we read it. um but it will be the very last huh okay <laughs> <laughs> How do you see concept of gender in social division of labor for this rock art? That's concept of gender oh, in this rock art. Recent, I recently, I did a one paper. If anybody is interested, they can read my papers. They are all on uh, online. Lot many papers. But can And you maybe summarize in one? I am one? telling you very this thing. No, I have seen uh, uh, in rock art, especially in early time, in Mesolithic time. there i don't think any gender discrimination was there the uh, the women all uh, they have participated for hunting for everything equal basis but gradually when you come to calculatic historic medieval the that was divided their job you know most of the time i see they are may cook their cooking they are um, carrying loads or uh, taking care of kids something like that but it it is in the late phase early phase no but the purpose has they have matriarchy that time because uh, i have found lot of signs also in it thank you okay. so, thank you so much yes. it's time to to close so i will give the floor to isabel so that she can come yeah. yes, thank you so thank you. much so thank you to all of us thank you to dr dubey and to stefan kovalsik and also to jean claude because he is with us tonight uh, it was great to be with you tonight we were very pleased um, to share this event with all of you some few few words take care uh, of the cave take care of the forest because it is a common treasure and uh, it is your heritage so you have to protect it it is very important and please young ladies do not hesitate to become prehistorian or archaeologist in india or in france thank you thank you thank you thank you very much isabel thank you bye bye thank you everybody bye bye bye